the numbers are in basically by the end of this decade by 2030 the most amount of market share LFP chemistry batteries will have is about 46 or 46.3 percent that's odd for a couple of reasons I'll get into that in a minute I'll show you a graph as well which I think you will find interesting so basically LFP batteries if you don't know they're much safer much better much more of the now it's a modern chemistry lithium-ion came around in 91 late 80s it was just kind of figured out 91 sold by Sony in Japan. Goldman Sachs did a really interesting and fairly simple graph of market share for different battery chem chemistries, NMC or NCM, same thing, just depends on how much of what material is in the battery as to the order of the letters, uh, or LFP chemistry basically. So it kind of shows that LFP chemistry is going to be uh, a really significant one, but just not the, you know, it's not consuming the whole market until 80 90% which is actually what I had assumed would happen. That is not the case at all. When you look into the data, and I actually have emailed uh, CATL and also got a reply from BYD, but it wasn't the uh, engineers or anything. It was just generally BYD, my contact that I have at BYD, basically, who's sort of one of their PR people. And I got some information. A few things to note first. There is a large drop in battery prices. That is true. The mainstream media would have you believe that it's twice as large as it really is. But uh, $153 per kilowatt hour to store it and create that battery in 2022, 153 US dollars. However, now it's about 111. So in a couple of years, we've basically dropped 50%. That is a big deal. Potentially, it will go down to $80 US dollars by 2026. But it kind of doesn't go much more than that. You, you know, in the next, by the end of the decade. It's just not much better than that by the end of the decade. Uh, so that will directly impact the price that we pay for a cheap EV, like uh, the Honda Jazz or the Toyota Yaris of the EV world. Those those ones without the bells and whistles, they're not trying to sell us extra stuff. It's just a car with a headlight knob on it. That's it. Those cars, uh, such as the Leap Motors, T03, for example, that sort of thing, is heavily the price heavily would fluctuate simply because of the materials in the battery. It's uh, And also the steel in the body as well. So it looks as though EVs will achieve cost parity with petrol cars by 2026, even without subsidies. At the minute, there is only just, we're on the fringes of actual cost parity, in my opinion, when you consider, for example, 7,000 euro uh, subsidy in France for, uh, say, BYD Dolphin. It does, that makes it kind of comparable then, but you need that grant from the government uh, you need them, the government to give BYD 7,000 euro to make it so that you've chipped in the same amount as petrol, which is not cost parity, is it? I don't think. So someone in the comments told me this morning that they actually bought a brand new Toyota Yaris hybrid five years ago. They paid 19 and a half grand for it in euros. And uh, their next car will be a Dolphin, BYD Dolphin, which is about 22 or 23,000 euro after the subsidy in France. But you don't pay, obviously you're not gonna be paying uh, European petrol prices, which are a bit more than, you know, some places. I don't know exactly what they are in America in different states because it fluctuates, but it's a lot cheaper than the European prices for petrol. Australian, I think Australians pay about maybe roughly half what Europeans pay per litre of fuel you put in the car. So it's a no-brainer if you ask me. Uh, that person who commented, I, I think it's a great decision. Go for it if you're watching this now. I only have one issue with the BYD Dolphin. I've got a BYD Dolphin. I drive that every day when I'm in Europe. I don't have that here in Australia. Uh, and that is the rear seats don't fold down completely flat like that. So you can have a kip in it or a nap or, you know, it's a bit harder, for example, if you're trying to move a fridge, because I'm a bit stingy. So I don't always like to pay like a removal van price or something like that. I like to just get everything, like a couch on the roof or a fridge in the car. You genuinely can do those things when you're moving a house. But uh, yeah, I'm getting older now, so I, I actually recently rented a van to move stuff and filled the van up with stuff way easier. You know, I just get a bit anxious with the insurance if you're going to get screwed with the insurance when you return it and they go, there's a scratch on there. And then they'll take off, you know, a couple of thousand euro or some silly number, like I've heard, happen. So I don't like doing that. I normally like to just put the graft in, you know. Generally speaking, NMC chemistries, they are more expensive. They're 20 to 30% more expensive than LFP chemistry batteries. There are some significant differences. Uh, and N NMC or NCM chemistry batteries, still really, really valid, very, very good. I still think we should use them for some things for a couple of reasons, namely the cold weather uh, performance and also the fact that they're just a bit um, lighter and that's quite good to get a bit of extra energy density in a car like a little Hyundai Insta, for example. That's kind of a plus, I would say, although my preference is LFP 
just put a bigger heavy battery in it, it's all right. Given that AV prices are going to be comparable quite soon, not necessarily competitive or better, just comparable, something that you could compare and reconcile to petrol cars quite soon. I'm excited for that for a couple of reasons. One, it means more people can drive EVs, and that's really nice. I'm fed up of smelling diesel everywhere. Uh, and the other one is that it aligns with my channel, and so there's a lot more things I can talk about when people have a Hyundai Insta or an MG4, for example, which was a great car. And it was just nice to see MG4s everywhere, simply because more people can afford them. That's kind of, that is clearly a better thing when more people can afford to buy a car. Um, one thing that Tesla did, obviously, they became uh, like Apple, you know, with the Apple Mac computers. They made it so that if anyone thinks, I want to get an electric car, you just get a Tesla. You just get them because they charge quick, they work well, uh, you know, the whole thing is smooth and that for you. I didn't really push for Teslas, I didn't really talk too positively about them until 2019 when they became a lot more reliable. Pre, pre that, I was fed up of stories of handles breaking and screens overheating, but they literally did. They went militant on these issues, they fixed them, and the screen inside, they actually connect now to a heat, heat exchanger with glycol in it, basically running coolant through the back of it. So that's, that's, that's how it's done. It's very good. So Tesla, not as bad as I thought. I'm still probably more of a Toyota person though. No bells and whistles, nothing fancy. I was reading an article this morning by CATL, the world's largest manufacturer of batteries, massive company. I recently did a video about that, how their R&D team uh, has 250 people in there with doctorates and almost 20,000 engineers. Amazing. Massive company. Bigger than you could imagine, I think. Uh, and they were talking about the length of time it takes to get a battery that seems to work and tick all the boxes through the testing phase, get all approved and get into mass production. It, 10 years, roughly, they say. They reckon it takes 10 years, which is why the LFP chemistry batteries took so long. And that was such a significant thing, obviously, since 1991, Sony released the uh, first lithium ion rechargeable battery that you could buy, 1991. 2018, 19, you know, you could go get yourself a LFP battery in a, in a house battery for your house or a Tesla or something like that, whatever. So uh, clearly a better battery, just slightly less energy dense. But other than that, you can do amazing things. And it's kind of interesting when I talk to people here, they still refer to battery chemistry as, you know, um, super, super temperamental, kind of like a traditional lithium ion battery from the 90s. And it's interesting because it's just not the case anymore. It's really good, which is also doubly good when you think about how it's probably not going to take over the most of the market, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 percent of the market. Why? That is weird. But there is a kind of reason for that. So so when you look at the graph for battery prices for EVs, it doesn't seem like it's too far off of equilibrium now. Obviously, that big drop has happened. It's got a lot cheaper and now it's kind of just tapering off. It's not going to get too much cheaper simply because if there was no industry, nothing to think about in producing a battery, if you just paid someone to walk through a factory with a rock, there is a cost to that, you know? There has to be a minimum cost to it. It seems as though when you look at the price of batteries uh, from 2022 to 2024, I don't think we'll see a 50% reduction over the next 10 years after this. So I think that is a significant thing. I think we're kind of almost at some sort of equilibrium with a steady reduction in, in, in the price of producing a battery to store one kilowatt hour of energy. So just to give you the numbers, LFP chemistry had an 8.3% market share in 2019. 20.2% in 2020, 22.8% in 2021, 26.6% in 2022, 37.1% in 2023, and 42.8% this year, basically. And it's expected to get to a height of 46%, actually, which is uh, 2029, I believe it was. Not actually 2030, it was a little bit. It apparently went down 0.3% in the projections by Goldman Sachs. If you don't know who Goldman Sachs are, you must have, been, must have been living under a rock, a uh, massive investment bank that um, I actually thought had gone bust <laughs> years ago. thought they had a big issue. Anyway, apparently still going. What do you think is the reason it isn't going to go more than that? What are your thoughts? If you want to pause it now and put some thoughts in their comments, that is interesting. I'm, all, I'm very aware that a lot of you are really, really smart. There are retired police officers and engineers. Uh, anyway, all sorts of people, university lecturers that watch my videos. And so I'm sure you've got some really clever stuff to say. And uh, it's really nice for everyone else to read those comments before me. So that's why I ask you to write your comments, because it's really awesome to see what other people say to your stuff. A few reasons that I can think of that uh, is that NMC, NCM chemistry is more energy dense. 
and they work a bit better in cold climates like Norway, Norway for example. Also premium cars with high output batteries where they need extra umph with less resistance that you know they don't get as hot. Simply uh, they would probably choose NMC chemistry even though it's a bit more expensive in a smaller space you can fit more energy and the battery will produce less heat as it just simply operates and charges so that is kind of why they often choose that and when you get a premium car generally that has a you know will have a bigger battery like let's say for example in the petrol world a v12 engine they're not going to be rocking around in 10 15 years for sale so i suppose the longevity of the battery like you know just you know having two or three thousand cycles to get to 80 85 percent capacity that sort of thing it's just not as relevant to those cars so it's just more important they just perform better when you you know you, you're pushing power into them and sucking it out doing really quick accelerating stuff like that so that's what i think anyway uh, the internal resistance roughly is about 10 or 20 percent less uh, than LFP chemistries as well. So that is significant. That means effectively they will not produce as much heat when you're accelerating, shoving out, say, two or three hundred horsepower. They just won't get as warm. That's actually a lot less uh, strenuous on the cooling system. So it just makes it easier to manage for performance cars too. So I think that's why uh, electric cars inherently one of their biggest uh, tricks up their sleeve is that they're quite powerful and so that is maybe why that is predicted I don't know exactly what um, methodology Goldman Sachs used to get their data but interesting nonetheless thank you for watching today's video folks my name is Ben Alexander I spent probably two or three hours this morning actually just really engaging and replying to the comments it takes a lot of time I can tell you that much there's just way too many comments so if you're a subscriber it can tell me uh, I don't know, I tried to pick most of the comments, especially with names I always see, so I hope I replied to, uh, I replied to a lot of them anyway. I appreciate that more than you know. Really, I really do, it's really touching to think that I do my videos and you have stuff to say, and really nice comments, you know, people saying that they really like my videos. That is just flattering. Nice, thank you very much, I appreciate that, I really do, because I work hard on these videos. Have a really nice afternoon. East Coast of